Sometimes after a long, hot, and dry summer like we've had this year, some of the plants in our landscapes can start to look a little tired, a little tattered, and a little bit worse for wear, such is the case with this Saucer Magnolia here in our studio garden. Even though we've watered it very well this summer and we've got a nice mulch around the roots, you can still see that it's scorched quite a bit. And this is quite common for the saucer magnolias in the central and the western part of Oklahoma. We just get all those hot drying winds that kind of do a number on the edge of the leaves. Now there's not a lot we can do for this plant right now. About the only thing we can do to make the area look better is to uh, just keep the leaves raked up as they fall and uh, just wait for the rest of those leaves to go ahead and drop. Now the flowers for next spring, they're gonna be okay. You can still see right here, We've got lots of flower buds, those big fuzzy buds here on the ends of the branches ready to uh, burst forth into flower next year. Now some of our perennial plants will also give us some of those signs of tattered leaves and sort of that worn, tired look here at the end of the year. Right here we've got a sweet black-eyed Susan. This is one of the Rudbeckias. A uh, nice little perennial, has the uh, little black-eyed Susan type flowers up at the top. You can see right here this one's a little bit smaller because all these these others that have been formed here, but uh, we've got a lot, of, a lot of seed heads up here, and if you look at the foliage, it's kind of brown, it's kind of tattered. Again, kind of uh, telltale signs that it's gone through a pretty rough summer. But the plant is letting us know that we can clean it up a little bit and prune it to help it out a little bit going into the winter. If you look down here in the center of the plant, you can see all this fresh new foliage that the plant has put on in the last two weeks. Now, whenever a perennial does that, we can safely come in and cut away all of these older stalks, all these, these uh, seed heads that are taking energy from the plant and just have the, the brown leaves from the, uh, the hot drying winds this summer. And we can really spruce up the garden and uh, make the plant look a lot better. Now when the plant does this, when it sprouts out down here, it's sort of the plant's investment in some more efficient foliage to photosynthesize and store sugars and store carbohydrates for the winter. So it's uh, wanting to use these leaves to help prepare itself for the winter and doesn't really, doesn't really need the leaves up at the ends of these tired looking stems. So we can just cut this away and just help this plant out. And who knows, we may even get another flower stalk or two from this sweet brown-eyed Susan. And uh, just having those, those old stems removed makes the garden look a lot better. Well, right over here, we've got another perennial that we can clean up a little bit. This is Rubeckia maxima, the giant coneflower, one of my favorite perennials in the world. These are native to the southeastern part of Oklahoma and a few other areas, a few other states in the southeast. But uh, you can see they've got the big blue leaves, beautiful foliage down here, and the, uh, the flower stalks can get up to about six feet tall, and they have those, those big black-eyed Susan-type flowers up at the top. It's one of those plants that I tell people that sort of looks like a black-eyed Susan on steroids. And you can see the seed head right here sort of left over from the uh, flowers in the late spring. Now this plant also, it's kind of looking a little tired. The leaves along the stalks here are a little bit brown, a little bit scorched, it's got a few, few holes in them. But uh, down below, a lot of this foliage is still very fresh, nice blue leaves. Now if we wanted, we could come in, cut away these stalks, and just leave all this nice foliage. But if we do that, we'd be getting rid of a seed head up here. And a lot of gardeners, myself included, enjoy the uh, look of the seed heads of a lot of the perennials. Sort of gives some interest to the winter garden. And another thing it does, these seed heads are full of little akeens. And those make great food for birds. A lot of the finches come in and we'll, we'll eat these 
these seeds, you can see how they, they kind of break apart there. And it's very common for us to look out here and see little finches perched up here, feeding on the seeds of this uh, Rudbeckia maxima. But um, whenever you're looking at the seed heads, you can make sure that the seeds are actually viable, that uh, it's gonna be something for the birds to eat. If they're stiff, if they don't bend easily, they have produced a good seed. It is possible, especially if you only have one plant of uh, a plant in the daisy family, that the uh, seeds will not be viable and they actually won't have any, any nutrients for the birds. And that's because if, if you only have one plant within about a quarter of a mile of most plants in the daisy family, they don't pollinate each other very well. Even though they have perfect flowers, male and female parts within the flowers, they won't receive their own pollen. So you may have a seed head of, of uh, no viable seeds and no food for the birds. So, so take a look at those seeds and uh, make sure they're, they're, they're firm, they're stiff, they don't bend real easy. Otherwise, there's nothing for the birds to eat. So we're gonna leave those, but another thing we could do to make it look a little better is just to trim away the leaves the tattered leaves on the stalk and uh, make it look a little better in that way. And that way we leave the seed heads for the birds and the winter interest. Just kind of clean it up a little bit in that way. So you can see we've just removed the leaves on the stalks and uh, really we're able to clean up the plant, left the winter interest and the seed for the birds on this giant coneflower. Now some of the other perennials you might look at cleaning up this time of the year, some of the things like perennial salvia, some of the yarrows will also sprout out at the base and we can cut away some of those old tattered stems and leaves. Now, other perennials like monardas or the bee balms and some of our tall perennial flocks, those, as we get closer to the winter, we can cut those back to about six to eight inches from the ground and get rid of that foliage if it's had a lot of problems with powdery mildew. Otherwise, we usually leave all of the foliage on our perennials through the winter to give a little bit of insulation to kind of help protect that root zone or that crown area from the cold weather. Well, you might take a look around your landscape and see if you can clean up some of those tattered, worn out looking plants for the fall.